We're live, live and kicking. Let me just check that we actually are live in the right group. This is the last time I'm doing this. I um, think I don't have a heart rate monitor on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just hold on, Laura, and I'll check. Yes, I can see us. My internet connection isn't that good today. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yeah, good. Yep, and people can see us. Mette from Stavanger, Norway is here, and there's a couple of other people. Yes, now they can start finding us in the right window. Hello, Laura. Hello. Hello, Elizabeth. Um, this is so exciting. Um, we are going to talk about your project today, uh, tonight, this evening, actually. And I just... I've heard, I've seen your name in, in many of the Facebook groups that I've been, that I'm a member, and I knew that you went to Tudid's uh, dog trainer school, but I didn't know you until this week, actually. <laughs> and it's been lovely so far. Yes. <laughs> uh, so can you uh, just tell me, where are you? You are in England now, aren't you? I'm in the very bottom of England in a county called Cornwall. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, the Atlantic, and um, across from us is it's La Manche, the you know the the Channel, mm -hmm. and Brittany, and so, and if you go to the Isles of Scilly, which is the the most southwest point of Britain, which is twenty eight miles from here, mm -hmm. and you go to Saint Agnes, a little island, and you look across, it's Newfoundland is the next piece of land, and that's I'm not from Newfoundland, but I'm from Canada, so mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't be much further. Yeah, I'm on the edge. <laughs> you, live, you live in the UK, you live in England, yeah. you are originally from Canada. Where in Canada? I'm from the um, West Coast, Vancouver, mm -hmm. and uh, our home there, um, over 10 years ago we left, is a little island called Gabriola Island. So you're from an island outside yeah. on the West Coast. <sighs> beautiful. I've been to Vancouver once. It was a beautiful city. Thank you. So I can see people coming on from Estonia, from Norway, from uh, Australia, from wow. the Netherlands, Spain. Great. What's the weather like in England at the moment? <laughs> um, well, this is an ongoing kind of joke I'm having with a lot of, you know, dog training friends and other people. They're saying, you're so lucky because I'm wearing woolly hats in July and August. And today I went out for a walk this morning and I had wellies, rubber boots and wool socks. <laughs> trousers a t-shirt a jumper a windbreaker yeah that's what it's like it's been sunny off and on but it's not warm enough to wear this you know the strapless uh, yeah. dresses or anything it's not hot so it's good for dogs but makes me a bit grumpy sometimes so that's a good description of the weather <laughs> <laughs> did i go on a bit <laughs> that's fine thank you you went to um um to did you go to dog trainer school Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, that and, and, and what, how do you started your career working with dogs? Okay. Uh, well, it was a while ago that I attended uh, the education. It was held in Bad Wimpfen. Uh, it was Sonja Hogan, um, dog, uh, dog com in, yeah. Uh, yeah. near Heidelberg. Mm -hmm. And that was 2014, 2015. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really didn't start until we moved to Penzance. So, well, that was about five years ago and slowly I started doing some behavior you know observations but I was a little bit shy didn't have the right at first I didn't have the right place I didn't have a garden to do observations so slowly slowly and um sort of last year I went to visit uh Christy Grant of the dog nose in Swindon and uh one of my PDT colleagues uh, pet dog trainers of Europe colleagues and uh she was very generous with her time and um I, I since then i took a course for her professionals for enrichment and decided well that's really what i want to do so last year on the isles of silly i held um a fundraiser for a local dog charity and i did an enriched environment and i had seven people in one day and i raised 150 pounds wow. then in february this year i came back i was on the isles of silly for a year and then i came back in february i started here and then two months and and lockdown but you know still doing a lot and um so in january i started the slow dog movement at the end of january and uh i like to say the slow dog movement is um catching on fast 
Very it's exciting. really bad. Sorry, it's so cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to uh, show us a PowerPoint now yep. about the slow dog movement. Shall I start that now then? Yes, please. Okay, and thank you. We have discussed this with Laura. It's it's you will get the best presentation when she's off the screen. She has some videos <laughs> in, in her, her presentation as well. And yes, I can see it now. Um, That's excellent. I'll let you know, Laura, when it's all ready for you. <laughs> Okay. So, so uh, as usual, I will. Uh, we will both be now off screen, but you can hear Laura, and I will uh, note down your questions. Please write any questions in the comments while Laura is talking, and then afterwards we'll go through them. Right? Yes. Okay. So, you. Oh, you cut out a bit. Are you still there? Hello. Okay. Can you hear me now? You're you're there. I can't hear you very well, but um. But you can you can just, you can just start, Laura. Okay, that's great. Thank you. So thank you, every everyone, for waiting till the very end to uh, listen to my talk about the slow dog movement. I'm very slow, so that's why I'm at the end. And thank you, Elizabeth, for the opportunity to present here today. Uh, the slow dog movement was created to spread the word that it's easier for us and better for our dogs' lives if we slow down when we're with them. Uh, the Facebook group that I started in January has almost 600 members. I mean, I didn't even look today. It might have 600 uh, and counting slowly. It, it's meant to show the right thing. And that's something that I learned from Tered Rugas during the uh, dog training. So I'll just talk about a, a few of the things that we can do to slow down with dogs. And that's slow down with them on walks and the smiling leash. Hopefully you've been able to hear from this smiling leash team. They talk all about that, uh, using the right equipment to harness long leash, smiling leash, uh, taking your time, letting dogs sniff. Uh, so that's one element um, to sit with your dog, sit beside them, keep them company, uh, to sleep with them or near them, they're social animals. They appreciate and they appreciate us uh, being near them. They feel safer, and to eat with them near. So if you're having a family meal and your dog is polite enough, and you've maybe done some training, or your dog is just having a rest because you fed them first, hopefully, for them to eat near you um, as well. Uh, so eat with them near and be near them when they eat, so they can relax and know that no one's going to come and take their food. Involve them in calm activities. Just do nothing with your dog. So in nature, at home, or the beach, sit and watch the world go by. I'll talk about that a little bit more and show some pictures, some photos. Uh, do natural parkour, um, enriched environments, indoor and outdoor. Observe our dogs in a loving and curious way. This is a quote from Carl Honore, who started the slow movement in 2004. He wrote a book, uh, he's written several books. So that's just a lovely quote for you. I just wanna say a little bit about myself. I started the slow dog movement uh, in January and I just wanna say I'm striving for that, but I'm not a perfect Zen being yet. I'm a mom, I'm middle-aged. I live in a ex council house in England. I have a teenage son and two dogs. So anything can happen. In terms of, actually, I'm gonna go back. No, I'm not. Uh, just on the last uh, screen, I just wanna say also that the slow dog movement is about a sea change. It's about changing people's perceptions and attitudes. Uh, my colleague, Michelle Dignam in Australia says, time, not distance. So spending time with your dog, not focusing on how far you've taken them for a walk. So quality over quantity, and it's all about the journey. Um, and in terms of uh, the slow movement, Carl Honore speaks about doing one thing at a time. And um, I've noticed that in my house, and this actually goes with children as well, when you decide that you're gonna sit down to work or do something in a certain room or you're getting ready, it's helpful if you don't, for your dog's sake, for instance, my dogs follow me and, you know, often, 
if you can gather things in a calm way or when you're sitting down, make sure that you have everything you need before you start to work or do a task, just so you're not jumping up every time sort of um, chaotically, that sort of calms them. Uh, and and Lisbeth, Lisbeth said this and other people have said this, you don't have to go slow all the time. I mean, I, I have been a runner, I have a broken toe right now. Uh, <laughs> and it's fine for your dogs to sprint and you know and fine for them to play and all these things it's not just to be a, a slow poke all the time but to to involve uh, slowness in your life and to focus on the relationship with your dog so um, I know that Dr. Amber Batson was uh, mentioned by else in the in the last talk Dr. Amber Batson says you know if you're going to have a sprint with your dog make sure that you rest before and after so I did come from Canada. Uh, this is a picture, this screen, uh, this photo now of, of a little girl. That's me when I was 10. And that's my dog, Muffin. He was a Chihuahua, Jack Russell Cross. And um, I was lucky enough to grow up in the beautiful province of British Columbia with forests and meadows. And of course, there was no computers because I was born in 1966. There were far less cars. And um, I grew up going to this little island where our home is now in Canada called Gabriola. So every summer I'd be with my dog and watch my dad chop wood and play on the beach. And we had long summer nights, so we were out and had lots of physical freedom. With my little dog there, I used to, in the meadows, watch him hunt mice and, uh, you know, just daydream really, because I was an only child. It was It was easy for me. I, I remember him feeling like my dog could read my mind. <laughs> that's that's how, when I look at that photo of myself, that's what I remember. So these are some of my dogs. Um, the dog in the bottom, now I don't know which is left or right, but the little girl again, that's me with the glasses and the ponytails <laughs> and my little dog Muffin. That was my first dog. I mean, I did have a couple dogs when I was younger. I had, we had Charlie when I was, a baby and he was a standard poodle and then we had beagles when I was uh, five uh, but I don't count those because I wasn't old enough for those dogs really to be my dogs and I'm, I'm giving you some background on me because I want to explain where the slow dog movement came from uh, I think it really informed my childhood really informed um, the slow dog movement and also how I was with my dogs as they um, well I had Bonnie the little Westie up in the top right from a puppy, um, she was my mom's dog and I basically manipulated my mom into giving her to me. And then uh, <laughs> we, um, my husband and I got Nash, he's a little ex-breeding Karen Terrier from a puppy farm. We adopted him at age seven. He's not with us sadly anymore. Now we have Izzy, the Jack Russell Terrier, a rescue, and Ted, who's a Wishon, also a rescue. So getting back to the way that we brought up our dogs. And so one of these dogs, the one of the Westies, the one um, jumping over the log closest to the person, that was Bonnie, my Westie, and her uncle Doogie in front of her. I didn't even um, know anything about natural parkour or slow walks or anything or choices, but our dogs were lucky enough just to live this life. I mean, you can see my mom and I uh, in the top photo walking across a log with the dogs. Like we didn't think, oh, that's good for them. Let's do it. But we were just lucky to live near terrain like that and um, go swimming with them. If they wanted to come in, they, they did. So we were very lucky. And I take that into this low dog movement. So I got the inklings for the idea in... 2016 and uh it was my my uh idea for the slow dog movement wasn't really like carl honore's he says that his was in praise of slow his book he says that his was more like a light light bulb i'm not using his words but the idea of a light bulb idea because he was uh considering buying a speed reading uh, fairy tale book to read uh, to his son. And at that moment he thought that is absolutely crazy. And he sat down and wrote in praise of slow in 2004. My idea was kind of a slow distillation and compilation of my upbringing, my daily life, uh, inspiration of, you know, the slow movement, slow foods, and of course my dog training education. 
so um, I can just mention that there are other slow movements. There's um, slow travel, slow money, slow sex, slow education, slow cities. You get the idea. So my dog training education, as I mentioned before the slideshow, was with Turid Rugas in Bad Wimpfen. Um, I applied to the PDT, Pet Dog Trainers of Europe, in 2013, just before I took my um, education. Actually, I applied, I believe, in February, and then I, I then applied for the education later in the year. And what, what prompted me to do that is our almost 17-year-old Westie, whom I adored, um, passed away. And I looked at uh, Turid's book, Calming Signals, on my bookshelf and thought, I haven't properly read that because I really didn't have any issues with my dog, Bonnie. And I, so I didn't, you know, I'd bought it, but I hadn't properly read it. So I sat down and read it and thought, this is amazing. I want to do this education and I want to help dogs. So I applied and took the program. I'm now a full member of the Pet Dog Trainers of Europe. And uh, I, I have to say that the Pet Dog Trainers of Europe, and I know you've already had, hopefully you've heard a talk from Karen Webb speaking about it, but I can't say enough about the organization. I'm not really a joiner and I've had a fantastic time. I've, I've been on the mentor program. I have fantastic mentors and colleagues that help me all the time. I learn from them, you know, daily. Uh, and of course I learned from my dogs. So dogs are the focus of the slow dog movement, but humans also benefit. Uh, the, the, the biggest quote on this slide is show the right or the correct thing. And, and I'm gonna talk a little about the opposite of that, sh showing the incorrect thing um, in a minute and how I've come to believe that showing the right thing, just like smiling leash is really, really important. Uh, you know, all of us try to do too much, I think, in our lives, me included, and we can't all be perfect, uh, but this give, gives us images daily, you know, to share and to strive for. And in the end, and I've said this before, it's all about the relationship we have with our dog, our connection beyond the leash. So my final project for my international dog tra training education, I'm gonna say IDTE from now on, because that's a mouthful. I'm gonna have a little sip of tea. It was called Dog Sweat and Tears. I'm a little bit corny. Uh, and it was about how humans impose their exercise ideals onto dogs and what we can offer them instead. So I did actually do a survey. I, I was a bit naughty and I joined some bike drawing and Caney Cross groups pretending that I was interested in that. And then I sent out a survey to those people and a wider audience. And I'm not gonna go through all the survey results and everything. If you're interested in that, I can tell you later. It wasn't groundbreaking. I actually found out what I already knew, which was people had these <laughs> ideas. So these are actual quotes from the respondents. You know, it's the typical thing, exercise, a tired dog is a good dog. Um, you know, he's part of the pack and we do stuff as a pack. That means bring them everywhere. So on runs, cycling, you name it. I mean, it is important to exercise your dog and you know, there's lots of different ways to do that without making them completely exhausted and hurting their muscles and their tendons and giving them injuries. And so, you know, I found out what I already knew. Um, and in the end, I didn't really want to show the wrong thing. I didn't feel like it was empowering and still wanted to make a change. This has got to be the worst thing that I found out. Um, <laughs> in a newspaper in England in 2015, I believe, this woman gave up her job so she could walk her dog seven hours a day. Apparently, he has a really high fitness level and he won the fittest dog in Britain competition. And I just think that this is the kind of thing that is our challenge. Uh, well, I feel is my challenge as a, you know, I do some behavior work, but um, even with Dog Sense, my enrichment uh, facility, I, it's, it's the sort of seed that I try to um, sow is there is an alternative. We don't have to do that. And actually, the slow dog movement is about having a better connection with our dog and slowing down to do that, um, showing an alternative, basically. And 
here I just want to acknowledge the fantastic um, colleagues that I have in the Pet Dog Trainers of Europe and say that, you know, so Slow Dog Movement, Smiling Leash, uh, we're showing photos and videos um, daily of the right thing to do with dogs. And uh, then, of course, I don't know if you've heard um, the Budzinskis in France, they're at the heart of the walk dog field study, uh, which is studies the heart rate of dogs on a loose leash, on a short leash and off leash. It's very interesting. There's Sindor Pangal's um, The Lives of Streeties project. Um, and, and actually, this slow dog movement was heavily informed by that and Dr. Amber Batson's and uh, Kirsty Grant's, all, all of the information that I've gathered from um, these women and just the, the ethogram, which you may have heard already spoken, I have in these talks this week, uh, which is the, the, the way that dogs are naturally when you let them to their own devices. So, you know, the, the street dogs, they don't live with people, but they live near them and they don't run around all day or chase balls. Um, they rarely even chase chickens. They basically chill, mooch, you know, they scavenge, groom, sleep, rest, socialize. So that the slow move, dog movements heavily informed by that. Uh, and at the bottom in red is the dog nose. These are all indoor, uh, dedicated indoor canine enrichment facilities, which I think are very valuable for the slow dog movement because um, it is wonderful to be in nature with your dog. Sometimes uh, weather and time doesn't allow, or sometimes dogs have special needs, mobility, um, age, uh, whatever it is, um, fear, reactivity and so indoor enrichment uh, facilities are fantastic um, they're they're really good for dogs that have issues with their joints because they're all padded um, have soft surfaces there's different levels um, and uh, so yeah I just wanted to speak about that a bit and also they're very safe the dog knows that when their human sits down no one's going to come in so they're 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 immediately relaxed or hopefully they should be um there's the snuffle garden project of which i'm the uk representative now uh there's also uh, um snuffle garden projects in the netherlands lapland australia and other places so i just wanted to mention them this is a little video i want to share with you now izzy our little jack russell terrier we adopted her a few years ago. And when she came to us, she was completely aroused all the time, like really hyper. And she was addicted to balls, anything that was round, basically, even if you picked up an orange, she would go crazy. And I should say that English way, orange. <laughs> so you understand what I'm saying. Um, and she was also addicted to water. So she would paddle in puddles. If you had a, a, a hose pipe outside, she would try to bite the water that came out of it. Um, and so our aim was to really calm her down. Uh, and hopefully in this video, you'll see that she is really calm and for a jack russell terrier a short-legged dog to actually walk most of the time and next to water she's walking without going in i mean she does sometime but she was so relaxed i just think it's such a beautiful transformation it takes time though and patience and love <laughs> and doing the right thing just let you watch that She now has uh, some mobility issues in, uh, with her because her back was injured from her early days before we adopted her um, We because of the tennis ball uh, chasing. She has bone spurs in her spine, so she, it's a bit harder for her to jump up and down off of surfaces, and uh, we're really noticing that it's affecting her behavior as well. So that's something that I would show or others would show on the Slow Dog Movement uh, Facebook page. Whoops, I'm gonna figure out how to get to the next slide. There we go. Uh, these are just some ideas for bringing slow into your dog's life and yours. Because if humans are happy, dogs are happy and vice versa, I should hope. Uh, and I've gone over some of these already. So the slow walk, the smiling leash, Silent dog walks, other people have, other speakers have spoken about that. So no chatter or commands and let, letting your dog lead, giving them choices, watching their body language and letting them follow your body language. 
So it, without even commanding, you can just sort of turn your body and and stop and point in a direction that you want to go instead of yanking your dog, letting your dog sniff at their own pace, watching the world go by. So you just stop on a park bench or wherever and just make sure that the humans um, that are walking or other dogs aren't walking directly towards you and just relax and ah, watch the world go by. And like Els mentioned, it's not just walking straight and you know it's important to find other places for dogs to climb and explore different surfaces logs hay bales in cities one i mean i don't live in a city i live in a small town uh with and i live in a suburb but i really like the industrial areas or by my premises there's a farm and my dog ted comes with me three times a week and he just loves going there I just mentioned the dedicated indoor enrichment facilities. There's also enclosed fields. They uh, are fantastic. They're a huge resource. We have a lot of them in the UK. Uh, I wanted to mention, I know that rescue dogs were also talked about in this series, but when we got our dog Nash, our little Karen Terrier, I was lucky enough to speak with Karen Webb before we got him and she advised that we basically just get him used to his harness and leash indoors but take our time to do that and we kept him indoors without taking him outside and we had a garden we were lucky so we had the doors open to the garden the french doors to the to the garden but um we kept him inside our house and the garden for a month and he just rested and got to know his new environment and us and we gave him space it was fantastic advice i highly recommend that This is a picture of my uh, newly adopted dog, Ted. He came to us at the end of February. He's um, probably an ex-breeding dog. He's only two years old. So when I go to Dog Sense, my premises, I bring him with me. So I go right now, I'm, I haven't had many uh, appointments. So I'm bringing him on my drop-in mornings, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings. and. Uh, he just he just cozies up right beside me but often when i'm cutting <laughs> don't worry i don't let him get cut on that cutter there but when i'm cutting strips for uh, of of felt for um or fleece for snuffle mats he likes to come right up cozy and uh he is getting used to the new environment really well and going off and exploring more things and coming back to me and I give him the hand signal and he now doesn't have to follow me everywhere inside the space. It's really, really lovely. I just wanna say that the slow dog movement is not mindfulness. I mean, if you practice mindfulness, go ahead and do it, but it's not you know, a philosophy, a religion or anything like that. There's no mantra, it's just, slowing down and doing one thing at a time and doing it well so that when you are with your dog, you know, other speakers have said, leave your mobile at home or turn it off. You can use it as a camera. Just try to do, um, as, as others have said, you know, just focus on your dog because your dog will feel it and you'll have a better connection. <laughs> this is uh, Ted and I in our Wendy house and you can't stand up in this little house but it's made of wood and it reminds me of canada i absolutely love it it's in our garden i sit in it and look at the garden and the roses and it's really nice to have a little space where there's no phone or tv even there's not even any books sometimes i bring a book in but uh you know it's just lovely it's a bit you know doing nothing it doesn't mean you sit around on the couch all day or you sit in the Wendy house all day. It's just taking a break and being beside your dog. I think it's a real um, shift in thinking about being with dogs as opposed to trying to do a lot with them. And uh, it it's a bit like parenting. I think people try to do you know a lot for their children, which is lovely. And at the same time, I think it's really good you know for children to get bored and for dogs to be with us in a calm way more. So if you can think about, instead of you know going to the agility class and going on the big, huge hike and thinking that's a good thing for your dog, 
without proper warm up or whatever, um, think again. You might have to sort of unschool yourself or, you know, undo some of your thoughts and and think in a new way. Uh, at least I'm asking you to. So I say there, you know, share some blueberries with your dog. I'm just going to show you some slides now that are photos from our members from the slow dog movement. And this is showing the right thing. It's really important for dogs to get enough rest and sleep in the day and enough choices of places to sleep. So up on the sofa, a big mat on the floor, maybe your bed. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my big hip there with my little Jack Russell and Ted using her back as a, as a, as a rest. And that's me in bed with my dogs. <laughs> there we are. Dog sandwich. That's watching the world go by. Again. We're actually waiting for uh, my husband to bring some bones from the butcher at this point. So that was good. Dogs can stop and watch the world as well. My dog Ted often walk, uh, stops on a walk. We just stand and listen and sniff and watch. Some natural parkour fallen logs, streams, lovely places to take dogs, if you can. This one with Ted and Izzy, our dogs, the big picture is uh, an enclosed field nearby, which is really fantastic. So the future of the slow dog movement has gone really quickly since January. I'm very excited. I, I love looking at the feed every day and, and seeing people's images and their videos. It's so calming to look at the pictures. And I've learned so much and made so many friends. Uh, I'm really hoping that we're going to have, I have um, actually have a, an admin who's joined me, Jonas Tulin, and he's fantastic. And I'm hoping more people will join to give us ideas. We're going to have some contests and other fun ideas. I'm building a website. We're going to have a new logo. I'm hoping to be able to offer drop shipped t-shirts for sale at cost and uh, eco graffiti stencils. So we can do some eco graffiti that's just chalk paint. Um, with the slow dog movement hashtag everywhere. <laughs> Don't call the cops. Um, and I'd love it if there was um, groups in the future, meetups, um, surveys and studies to explore people's ideas about how they are with their dogs and how we can create change um, for the better. And it's all about community, really. I would love your ideas, send them in any time and your photos, your posts, you know, just like Smiling Leash, I'd love to for you to join uh, the Slow Dog Movement and send in your pictures and, and posts. It's really, really inspiring and helps everyone, I think. Uh, I was lucky enough the other morning, it was the day before my birthday, so Wednesday morning this week, to, I just thought I would contact Carl Honoré who wrote In Praise of Slow, and he's basically, you know, the father of the slow movement or the global guru on the slow movement, it says on his website. And he answered my Instagram message and I was so pleased. Um, it's coincidental that we both grew up in Vancouver uh, and that we actually know a person in common on the little island where my home is in Canada, which is very, very small world. Made me so happy. He's a lovely man. And uh he supports the slow dog movement and I'm telling you that's the best birthday present I ever had. Uh, so 
I just want to say uh, that I opened Dog Sense in February of this year, and I was helped immensely, of course, by Turd Rugas because when we did our education, we would set up observations and enriched, uh, sorry, enriched environments to do observations of dogs, and I learned so much then. And then, as I said before, Christy Grant of the Dog Nose in Swindon was absolutely fantastic. Her, she gave me time, generosity of spirit, um, and her education workshops are fantastic. Um, so what's great about Dog Sense, this is the outside of my premise, it's, it's in an old farm building. Uh, I have a lot of uh, uh, objects in there that have scent history. So a lot of them are children's, you know, you know, children's toys, tunnels, and there's clothing, there's things that, uh, there's animal bedding, there's old collars, you name it. There's a lot of things to smell to, there's even things to taste. Uh, it's fantastic because it's safe, it's fun, it's enclosed, low impact, confidence building because the dogs are problem solving. It's a supported enrichment, which means it's the passive accompaniment of the dog's human. Uh, that means the, the owner is sitting there, really relaxed, hopefully breathing more than I am right now. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm relaxed now. And uh, the dog knows the human's not gonna leave. I offer, uh, before before um, COVID actually, I offered people cups of tea and, uh, you know, so that they could sit and just enjoy watching their dog, learn about their dog. It's very stress busting. Uh, it's brain boosting. It really helps their brain. The sniffing is relaxing. Uh, we do, it's really fun because they get to search for treats in different areas. There's different levels of, um, items so I have um, sort of steps going up and ramps and that kind of thing for perhaps you heard someone mention propios proprioception so the dog's awareness of their body in space and going up different levels so yeah it's it's fantastic and I also hide uh, dog chews as well and I sell JR pet products and my own handmade snuffle mats I'm going to show you a little video. This is one of my clients who's quite a shy dog, and he really enjoyed Dog Sense. You'll notice he keeps looking back at my, at me, and the, the camera. Yeah, <laughs> bless him. So it's why I, in the middle of the. Um, space there i have a wooden structure and i hang things on it like there's a blanket there so the dogs can go behind the blanket if they're shy i have herbs safe herbs for dogs so they can sniff them This is another video. This video has a an older dog, and um, she is undergoing medication. She's not very well, dog. She's absolutely gorgeous. So this is second video. In this case, I made the finding of treats easier for her. Every time I have another dog, I set it up slightly differently for them. That's a raised box there for the puzzle. If she's hiding from us, there she is, bless her. So thank you very much for listening to my talk about the slow dog movement. I hope you got some little idea of what it's about and hopefully you'll join our community and share your images and videos and have you know more community in the dog world.
And thank you to Lisbeth for the opportunity for speaking today. I'm going, the next slide is my contact information. Okay, thank you very much, Laura. I'm going to leave that contact information. No, no, it's gone now. Oh dear, it's, oh dear. It's okay. It's okay. It's it's um it's all being recorded, so everyone can go back and and just talk and just check it out. And I will also, by the way, uh, again, like I always do, I will post it in the comments below when we've finished. Thank you very much, Laura. Can you see me now? Um, yes, I can see you. Yeah. Hear me? Well, okay. It was a lovely presentation. Thank and you. I look at, you can just look forward to afterwards when you look through the comments. People oh. are very happy about it. It's oh, good. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. I need to be quite quick with the questions because they're disappearing on my screen. Oh, dear. Okay. Although uh, my, my good friend Yamna is helping me at the other end. So, Yamna, can you please copy the questions for me in, in Messenger like we did last time as well? Thank you. Someone is asking, which herbs do you have at Dog Sense? Okay, thank you. Uh, I have chamomile, peppermint, lavender, lemon balm, rosemary, and oregano. Oregano. Okay, yeah. Um, and another question was, uh, someone was asking, um, how can you help uh, a working dog that has a, a lot of energy? I, I think that dog had a lot of energy. How can mm. you help that dog to calm down and be more slow? <laughs> Thank you. Hmm. You have to have patience and invite them to be slow. So I think some of the other speakers, it depends if they're going on a walk uh, they have to have, I'm going to echo the smiling leash, basically. They should have the right equipment, the harness, the long, loose leash. And if you can go slow and invite them to just be slower by being in areas that they might be interested in sniffing, and I'm just echoing smiling leash, really. So that's the, the walking part. If, I mean... I would recommend that <laughs> that this person watches the smiling leash. I don't want to repeat what my colleagues have already said, but uh, you know, uh, if if those steps that smiling leash uh, recommend, then you may need to read Turid's book. Uh, my dog pulls. What can I do? Or then find a trainer to work with. But that's just the sm the, the 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 walking part. The other part is to just take a break yourself because dogs really pick up what we are doing in our stress levels for instance yeah. this week since i've been i shouldn't really say this but uh, since i've been preparing this preparation i've been really nervous and at times my dog ted has been behind me chewing his feet and i just oh that's when i know you know he's really picking up on my bundle of nerves so i take a break and go and do something that has nothing to do with what's stressing me out and have a cup of chamomile tea and be outside and you know have some contact with him, you know, maybe stroke him, that kind of thing. And it's, it's really like checking in on yourself and doing calmer activities of which I've mentioned, you know, whatever makes you calm. I mean, it could be anything. It could be yoga even, you know, my Jack Russell, unfortunately, when I do yoga, tries to climb on my mouth, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's helpful. I'm happy to, if anyone wants to write to me, I can, you know, try to answer questions. But it's so true though, Laura, that it's us and we can't hide from the dogs. No. If I'm stressed or if I'm, it's, uh, I just need to give this example. I have three dogs. If I'm in a rush when I go somewhere, mm -hmm. they are, um, I, I don't know, they, they just, I can see that they're stressed. I get more stressed and I try to get them in my car. You know, that situation where you have the three dogs. Uh, I need to get them in my car to get to get going. If I'm stressed, the dogs are just all over the place. And I'm thinking, oh, you're not well behaved at all. But then if, I, if I'm not in a rush, they're lined up. I don't say anything. They're just sitting there waiting to go into the car mm -hmm. one by one. And it's just, it's me. 
because yeah. they can actually smell the level of stress hormones that yeah. is in our body. I've tested this. Wow. I could be quiet. Uh, when I had eight dogs, I, when I was, even though I didn't say anything, I just sat down very calmly. I sat down. The dogs were reacting to my level of stress because I was stressed inside. Mm -hmm. And they and they can absorb cortisol, the stress hormone from our hair. Yeah. There's lots of studies recently in the past year all about this, about how close we are to dogs and how dogs are pick up from us, you know, mm -hmm. our emotional state. So uh, there is another very interesting question. Um, can you make it slow on swimming as well? As my dog is making sounds when swimming back uh, on hunting trainings, which is not allowed for retrievers. Oh, wow. Do you know what? I have to say, hands up, I know nothing about hunting dogs, uh, like and hunting and retrieving or anything like that. Um, I know that there are members of the Pet Dog Trainers of Europe that have more experience in this area. I'm certainly not one of them. Um, I've had dogs swim with me but only their choice. Mm -hmm. I, I've never made my dog swim. I don't believe in making them do anything like that. <laughs> so mm -hmm. when they wanted to, they they would only follow me for a short while and and then have a chance to, to leave the water. So I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that question. Maybe, Lisbeth, you could say something. I'm not very big on hunting dogs either, although I have a retriever. But Again, I'm thinking that if the dog is is really excited when it's swimming, mm, mm. Um, it's 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 the environment, it's the situation the dog is put in. Yeah. So um, you need to do something about the environment, the situation. And it's dangerous too. I um, just read an article about the, the fact that dogs can swallow water, yeah, and yeah. and get really ill and die. Mm -hmm. So it's really important for them to not be too stressed while they're swimming. Yeah. There's a beautiful, beautiful um, video on the Slow Dog uh, Movement uh, Facebook group right now that Santos um, posted of his dog swimming in a river. Oh, it's lush. It's in Spain. It's so beautiful. Please check it out if you join. <laughs> I also want to um, answer the, to that question with a, a working dog who's very enthusiastic and engaged. Just visiting Laura and other um, people who can offer you an enriched environment, or you can make an enriched environment. Yeah. If you join your Facebook group and the Slow Dog Movement, you get a lot of ideas how you can do these things at home to make a rich environment. It's something we actually have to learn. Don't you agree, Laura? Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to learn to do this. It's not daunting. I mean, I. I actually uh, have a free ebook on my on my website, and it's about enrichment, everyday enrichment for dogs. And I created it because I was supposed to, before lockdown, do an Easter in-person workshop with people, not with their dogs, but for their dogs. They would come to my workshop, and I had just all recycled things. I mean, Kirsty and other colleagues uh, have gone over these things a lot, and so I, I just wanted to bring it to you know the public, um, since us dog trainers know about it, I wanted to bring it to the people where I live. And because I couldn't hold the workshop because of lockdown, I made this ebook and I have some um, little videos on there and I also have on enriched environments and I have, um, or little things that you can do. And I have lots of links to many other people. So hopefully that'll be helpful. Great. And um, for people who, uh, just a regular, not just, <laughs> but a regular dog owner who is not a dog trainer or, or working with dog professionally. Um, can they come onto your web page, uh, web, uh, to, to your Facebook page and learn? And then maybe they can teach their friends, their other dog. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. It's yeah. it's not rocket science. <laughs> and in fact, you know, so that's why the Facebook page is so supportive. People ask questions all the time. Is this okay? Can I do this? And, and so it's such a mix of people on the Facebook page. We have vets, we have dog trainers, we have, you know, dog, you know, humans, humans that have dogs. We have people that don't have dogs, but just love dogs. Yeah. There's lots of different people um, all across the world. 
that are posting pictures and videos and posting their thoughts and articles and asking questions. So I'm hoping that's just going to grow and grow. Mm -hmm. And by the way, my videos that I do, I'm not trying to sell them or anything, but they are so funny because I'm not very slick. And my son was helping me make them. So I just wanted people to feel at ease, you know, because yeah. just because I did the dog train, it doesn't mean that I'm perfect. And just so you can see that it, you can have fun with this, you know, it doesn't have to be really serious and you can just use things in your house. So it's, that's, you know, it's, it's really simple and people should just try. And you're doing all this for free because it's a free, like, uh, yeah, it, it's free. That's, or is it a membership? Uh... No. No, not yet. I mean, you know, I'm going to build a website and then if there was a membership there, it wouldn't be, I I mean, in the future, maybe the slow food movement has a membership because then they have a newsletter and everything. I don't know. I If, if it was, it would be a not-for-profit in the future. Yeah. And that would be that all the money would go towards, you know, meetings and education and that kind of mm -hmm. thing. But it's it's early days it can build slowly and and hopefully the people in it will be the ones uh, that help grow it and and it will it will grow organically because of the people in the movement so that's what i hope this is just your passion and imagine is. january is this year you're talking about right pardon me sorry january 2020 that you started this yes yes at the end of january <laughs> It's really growing. The slow movement is growing really fast, yeah. ironically, <laughs> and happily. Yeah. yeah. Uh, someone is asking. Someone is commenting. I have all actually made enriched environment for the cats in the house. After yeah. this, talked about it. It's not just for good for dogs, also for horses. Yes. 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 Okay. So enriched environments. I'm glad someone mentioned that. Thank you very much. Uh, so they were first created for captive animals, for animals in zoos, on farms. I mean, hopefully enlightened farmers use them now. So they may put like an old boot and like, a, you know, some stumps or something in with the pigs and and for the horses as well and and change it up so that there's interesting sniffs and smells and te textures because they, they use their mouths and their teeth and they taste things yeah. and that's how they explore the world. And um, cats, it's interesting because we were visiting my husband's um, landlady because he used to have to commute up to Swindon where Kirsty is for work. And um, his landlady has a cat. And I noticed that, I mean, I've had cats before. I love cats. The cat, because I'm doing enriched environments for dogs, I was watching the cat's behavior. And, and, and when we put our shoes down, she just stuck her head into the shoes whoops <laughs> and was sniffing all the shoes and rolling on them and yeah. stuff and then when the late when um his landlady brought the groceries the cat was in the grocery bag just like we do with our dogs and so it's mm -hmm. so true cats love it all animals need enrichment someone is writing f ferrets too wow <laughs> and of course yeah yeah well all animals really seriously all animals yeah. guinea pigs rabbits you know Definitely. yeah so, good point thank you yeah, very good okay i think that was all the questions um yeah i'm just talking to Jan, my assistant now is there any more questions Jan? so please can you copy them for me to my uh, messenger um thank you very much uh, laura there is you, 69 comments now you should go through them afterwards they are really thank happy about it. Aww. So, oh my. so now you can you know, take a deep breath. This will be <sighs> well. Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I will post all the important information where people can get find your Facebook page and all the information. Thank you. Uh, afterwards, you need to be a member of your, your group, obviously. Thanks. Okay. Yes. Uh, Janne is saying no more questions. So thank, thank you, you very much, Laura. Thank you. I will remove you from the screen and I'll have a okay. few words to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <clears throat> okay. That was sadly our last presenter. Uh, but we're not quite finished. I'm going to come back. We'll have a little break, just five minutes or so, and I will come back and tell you about uh, what happens after this. Because this actually started out as a just 
just an idea I had. I was sitting in my kitchen a couple of weeks ago, a <laughs> few weeks ago, three weeks ago, something. And I thought, oh, maybe I should do something this summer. And look, now we're more than 2,000 people in this group. And there are more than 3,000 people registered by email. So it can't end. It can't just end. So I'll be back. I will be back in uh, five minutes. Five minutes, I'll be back. And I will tell you what now. And I will also tell you about our online level one course starting in August. And if you are attending, if you're watching the live in five minutes, you can get the opportunity to win a free spot at the level one course. I will give away three free spots tonight, but it's only if you watch it live because you need to look at the PowerPoint and tell me something that you will see on the PowerPoint. You will have to write me an email afterwards and we'll do the drawing of the winners tonight. Okay, so I'll be back in five minutes.